In today's video, we're gonna be discussing whether a whole home solar system with battery storage is worth it. And make sure you stay till the end because at the end of this video, I am going to go over all of the costs that you can expect to pay for a system like I'm gonna describe. Now I had my whole home solar system installed about three years ago. So I've got a pretty good amount of experience in this now, but gosh, going back all the way to 2013, I've been working with tiny solar equipment when they were separate charge controllers, separate inverter, wiring marine batteries, <laughs> going back to the good old days. So is a whole home solar system with battery storage worth it? Well, short answer in my opinion, absolutely yes and I'm going to be going over all the reasons I think it is but I'm also going to go over the challenges that you're going to have to face if you're going to try and do this yourself. So let's briefly go over how a whole home solar system works with battery storage so you have a good idea going into this. So basically how it works is the solar panels outside collect energy from the sun via basically a DC electric current sending that back to the inverter and the solar inverter is the brains of the operation, basically taking that power from the solar panels and inverting that to AC power, which is the type of power we use in our homes. So you're gonna send power from that inverter over to your home electrical panel to be able to power all of your loads. Now the batteries also are going to be connected to that solar inverter and the batteries store DC power. So again, the inverter is gonna take that battery DC power, invert that to AC power, and then send that into your home electrical panel to cover all your loads. And that inverter can be programmed like how I have it to where I only use solar and batteries until my batteries get down to 20% and then I'll use my backup source of power, which for me is the grid, because that's the cheapest form of backup power as of right now. And then it'll go to grid until the sun comes back up and has enough solar power to cover my loads and charge my batteries. Now I do have a generator because I do want backup power just in case the grid goes down and it's really cold and I end up going through my battery bank. So I do have a standby generator that I can start as well if needed. Now, if you're interested in a system like mine that you see here behind me, I did create a free wiring schematic PDF that you can download that goes into all of basically the materials I use, including the equipment I bought for the installation. And you can download that for free by going to flexboss21.com. So before I go into all the reasons and the challenges to installing one of these whole home solar systems, First off, I want to apologize for not releasing a video in over two weeks. I went to San Diego to enter solar, which is one of the biggest solar conferences here in the nation to try to get a look at the new equipment that's coming in. And I came back with a bad case of the flu, which ended up turning into strep throat. I tried to tough it out for five days without taking any type of medication, which I'm not a big fan of pharmaceuticals. And after day five, I was in really bad shape. So luckily, <laughs> I tried to get an appointment with my doctor, which was gonna take about three days, but luckily I had this Jace medical case right here. This basically has an emergency supply of the common antibiotics you would need in case you got pretty ill. And luckily they have a booklet in there that has the exact thing I need to take for strep throat. So I took that and I started that three days in advance before having the doctor's appointment. And the doctor basically said, keep doing what you're doing, though he did say take a higher dose. I finally knocked that out. So Jace Medical is not a sponsor of this channel. I am an affiliate of theirs and I really like their product and this is the first time I've actually had to use it. So um, if you're interested in an emergency medical case like this with all the common antibiotics you would need in an emergency, click on the link in the description below and you can use the discount code BRIANZ10 to take $10 off. So here are the reasons why I think a whole home solar system is worth it. Number one, you don't have to worry about the electric company raising your rates. And over the last five years, they have raised them dramatically. Here in Texas, we went from about 10 cents a kilowatt hour to now where we're about just under 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So that's almost a 50% increase in the last five years. Now, if you have a whole home solar system like this, that you are barely gonna feel that at all when it comes to your electric bill. Now with my system, I'm off grid about 90% of the time. So 10% of the time, I still use a little bit of that electric grid to power my home during those big storms where there's like no solar power coming in and it's multiple days, so I've drained my batteries. But I'm talking about an electric bill that I have now that is about $35, $40, and $23 of that is a fixed just service fee that they charge me just to have access to their electricity. So as those rates continue to skyrocket, I am not going to need to worry about that. It might raise my bill $5, maybe $10 a month. No big deal at all. And reason number two, you'll not be without power ever again during a grid outage. You'll be the only one on your street with power. And reason number three, 
you're gonna be a lot more conscientious about your electric usage. You'll be able to see exactly how many watts you're using inside your house running your appliances and lights and everything at any point in time. So you'll quickly be able to see when you turn on that electric dryer how much those watts skyrocket because anything with a heating element like an electric washer and dryer, actually really just an electric dryer, the washer's not gonna take much at all. But the dryer, your electric water heater, those are gonna use around four to 5,000 watts when you're running those. An electric oven, same thing, three to about 4,000 watts. And then your air conditioner, which a four ton traditional air conditioner can use around 3,500 watts. So you'll begin to see that, you know, when you have that excess solar power, during the day, run those big appliances a lot more. Do your drying dur during the day. Maybe run your water heater a lot hotter during the day and then maybe tone it down a little bit at night. I can do that with my water heater. I can program it electronically from the app. So there's things you can do, basically lower your electric usage. So, and right now, probably with your electric company, you don't get to see how many watts you're using at any point in time. So you have no idea. You're just using electricity and then hoping and praying your bill isn't too high. Well, with one of these inverters, you're not gonna need to guess anymore. And reason number four, you are gonna be self-sufficient when it comes to your own power needs. You are gonna be providing the power for your home, not some electric company. And that's security that you cannot put a price on. As long as there is sun, as long as you have battery storage, you're going to have power. Now, even in overcast weather, you still produce about 30% of what you would have. So you just back off on your electricity a little bit if the grid was down, and it's a cloudy day, but you're still gonna have power for those necessities like your refrigerators, lights, TV, internet. You just may have to back off on doing your drying or using your water heater or using your air conditioner during that day. But once the sun comes back out, you can blow and go again and use all those appliances. Now, before I go over how much it is for a system like mine to run your whole home with enough battery storage to make it 24 to 48 hours, even if there's a big major storm. Let's go over the challenges that you're gonna face if you're gonna try and do a system just like mine. So the first challenge that I see is, if you're gonna DIY this project and do it all yourself, you're gonna have a lot of learning on how electricity works, how to make electrical connections into these inverters, how to connect solar panels, how to wire them in series or in parallel, and what each of those actually mean to make sure you're not overloading your system or underpowering your system to the point where it won't work. And then you're gonna to have to be hooking this equipment up to your main electrical panel, which is 240 volts, and that can kill you. So if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna to wanna to hire an electrician to at least do the big major connections so you don't kill yourself. Now, a whole home solar system with battery storage is no joke. There's enough power coming from those solar panels. To, <laughs> when it's peak sun and you have a lot of panels, you could power like three or four homes. That's a lot of power, so you're not gonna wanna mess that up. It can kill you. But even if you're not good with electricity or have worked with an electrician for many years like I have, you can still do most of the labor yourself and just have an electrician come in or a solar installer come in and make those final connections and maybe make a few adjustments if they need to. That'll still save you a ton of money. Now, challenge number two is even if you're not selling back to the grid, which I don't, and nowadays the contracts are giving you, they're not giving you the one for one credit, which means if you create one kilowatt of power from your solar panels and you send it back to the grid, now it seems like they're only giving you 0.2% of a kilowatt hour to use back. So you're basically just a wholesale power producer now for the electric company. So I recommend getting batteries, storing all of that power yourself. But even if you're not selling back to the grid, at a minimum, your electric company is gonna most likely wanna come out and inspect it, make sure you have a disconnect so you can be disconnected from the grid completely and not send power back up their power lines to one of their unsuspecting line workers trying to fix a down power line. Now, when I put my system in, I'm in a rural county here in Texas and they didn't have any requirements at all. The county was like, whatever, if you're gonna do it yourself, you're gonna kill yourself, that's on you, no big deal. Now, even my power company does have what they call a soft agreement where they want you to sign something saying you have a disconnect. I don't even think they require inspection, but I'm not typical. I'm in a rural area of Texas. If you're in a big city, I mean, it's going to be tough. They're going to be really hard on you. Have lots of paperwork they're going to want to see. They're going to come out and inspect. I'm sure they're going to want you to change a few things up. They're going to cost you even more money and then more for a reinspection. Now, I do have a company that I do work with that nationwide helps residential homeowners through the permitting process to give you all the line diagrams that are going to be required. And then you're just going to have to follow that diagram on your install to make sure it's done correctly. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to who that company is. 
so you can reach out to them if you're looking for help with a permitting package. But bar none, going through the permitting process and working with government is always a pain in the butt. So that is the most frustrating part of this whole process, for sure. Now I'd love to hear your horror stories in the comments of what you went through if you put a system in and had to go through permitting. Was it smooth? Was it not? What area were you in? I'd love to hear about it. So if you would go to the comments section and let me know about that. And the last challenge is the cost of the system. Now an awesome system that I recommend if you want to run your whole home is the, is the EG4 system that you see behind me which is the EG4 Flex Boss 21 inverter paired with the EG4 Grid Boss, which basically aggregates all of your power. It's like a, a service entrance disconnect that's really made to work with EG4 equipment. It has smart loads so you can wire up anything you'd like that you want to shut down if you have only a certain amount of solar or only a certain amount of batteries. It's really neat technology. And then the EG4 battery that you see behind me here, which is the indoor wall mount battery, or go with their Power Pro model, which is actually EMP protected. If you're looking at a system like this, for just the materials alone, for the Flex Boss 21 inverter, for the Grid Boss MID, basically service disconnect, and then about 28 kilowatt hours of batteries, which is kind of the minimum I'd recommend if you really want to run your whole house. Just that package right there is about $15,000. And that's before getting your solar panels and your solar panel racking or whatever you're using. If you're doing a ground mount rack or you're doing racks on your roof, you're probably looking at a minimum of 10 kilowatts of solar panels for a whole home system. And I would get more if you could. I have 19,200 watts of solar panels. So if you can get up to more of that 19 kilowatt range, you'll be really happy or a lot more happy on cloudy days. But you're looking at probably another seven to $10,000 for the solar panels and the solar panel racking. Now add another, I don't know, two to 3,000 and just wire, your solar panel disconnects, just miscellaneous items, wire troughs, things like that. And for a system like mine, you're easily looking at $25,000, maybe as high as $30,000. And that's for materials only if you're doing all of the labor to install it. If you're looking to have somebody else install it for you, you could pretty much double the cost of that. So you're looking at around $50,000. Now my recommendation would be to learn everything you can. So keep watching YouTube videos, learn so you can do this at least most of the labor yourself and only have an electrician come in for a day or two just to make some final connections then you're looking at probably two to three thousand dollars in labor for an electrician rather than you know twenty five thousand dollars if they're doing the whole system for you so is twenty five thousand to thirty thousand dollars a sizable investment for a system like this absolutely yes it is but I find it funny that people will say that's too expensive and they're out there driving like an 80 to $100,000 SUV or F250 that they don't need. So I guess it all comes down to priorities. But keep in mind that with a system like this, if it's on your, if it's on your home that you live in, you do get the 30% tax credit. Now that brings a $28,000 system all the way down to about $19,600 out of your pocket. So that's a pretty big savings. But keep in mind, because what a lot of people don't tell you is you have to have paid that same amount, whatever that credit is, in federal income tax for you to get all of that back on your tax return. Now, if you don't pay federal income tax, then the credit's worthless. You're not going to be able to get anything back. Now, most of us do pay some sort of federal income tax. Now, most likely, it's not going to be as much as the credit that you're going to get for your solar system. So what it does is it carries over into the next year or the year after that. So if you only paid 5,000 in federal income tax, for instance, this year, then you'll get that $5,000 back on your tax return. And then let's say you had another 10,000 carry over to the following year, then you'll take another 5,000, let's say if you had another 5,000 in federal income tax the following year, and then you'll take the following 5,000 the last year. So that's how it works. So hopefully that makes sense. Now I am not a CPA, so check with your own tax advisor on that, but I at least wanted to give you a heads up on how that works. So just to throw out some broad numbers there, let's say your electric bill is $300 a month. Now I'm gonna guess with a system like this that I described, it's the size that I have, which is about 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage. If you have 10, 15,000 watts of solar panels, which is 10 to 15 kilowatts of solar panels, your electric bill is probably gonna drop down to around 50 bucks a month. So that's a saving of $250 a month. Now you could get your electric bill even lower than 50 bucks a month. So it just all depends on how you manage your electricity going forward. So now let's take the total cost of that system after the solar tax credit, which would be around $19,600. Divide that by $250 a month that you're saving. That's a little over a 78 month payback period or about six and a half years. 
And that's if your electric bill doesn't continue to go up, which we all know what the answer to that question is. So in my opinion, it is absolutely worth it to have this paid back in six and a half years. Now that's if you pay cash for it, you don't take a loan out for it. Now, hopefully you found some value in this video. My goal with this channel is try to teach you all how to live more independent from the electric grid with solar and battery storage. So if you like content like that, please like this video, subscribe to the channel as it does really help let this video reach a newer audience. That's it for now, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.